Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, big boisterous blue sports watches. It's Le Loc versus Le Chaux de Fonds in a showdown between Cartier and Ulysse Nordin. Cartier, surprisingly, is the veteran in the space, not because it was in divers before Ulysse Nordin, but because the model here specifically bowed in 2016. Let's quickly Throw the watch on the wrist and review the heritage. Of course, Cartier's Calibre de Cartier Manufacture Movement Dress Watch bowed in 2010. We got a black dial, black bezel diver version of it in 2014, and this beautiful ceramic blue bezel, blue dial diver bowed in 2016 at SIHH, and many have said that this is the definitive version of the watch. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the stainless steel 42 millimeter diver is easy to wear. It's also slimmer than you'd imagine, only 11.3 millimeters thick compared that to a 12.6 millimeter thick Rolex Submariner, and you realize this watch is over a millimeter thinner than the Sub. Look at it next to my cuff. No problem wearing this one with a tight sleeve. Lug to lug, it's smaller than it appears. 48 millimeters lug to lug, and the ergonomics are brilliant. You can see that the watch features a dramatically cambered and curved case. It's almost like a tonneau shape. And then there are these revetments underneath, or recessions, that allow the strap to be sunken into the case band, so you get a super tight integrated look with no daylight showing, but none of the flare and fight that generally comes when straps are pinned against case flanks. Excellent ergonomics and a wonderfully substantial natural vulcanized rubber Cartier strap, 24 millimeters wide so it has a contemporary planted stance and appearance on the wrist. It also features a Cartier branded alternately polished and satin finished pin buckle and you'll note that it features an elevated bridge with the two prongs allowing the strap to sit between them rather than underneath the bridge so it sits flat on the wrist. I love that attention to detail. Now jumping back to the case, you can see the Cartier dress watch pedigree and why I see this watch as the more natural of the two if you're going to wear your diver with formal attire. The detailing is nuanced. Look at that hairline bevel along the lug. Look at the taper of the lug from the root to its end and the handsome rounded profile with the black screw inset. Look at the step out of the lugs from the case band. It's not a huge case sheer, but it is broken broken up by the step of the lugs, which are simply gorgeous. Now you turn it over and you can see some of the Cartier dress watch style with double finished, and I might even say triple finished, shear guards. As you can see, they're blasted internally, satin finished on their face, and then there's a little bit of a high polish with a blue faceted spinel inset as a cabochon on the polygonal and rounded, both at once, crown. The timepiece having these removable shear guards that can be replaced during service if they do get knocked. That's why they're fixed by screws. There's a polished and sharply knurled outer face to the bezel, and that's a handsome accent against the satin finish of the case, as well as the gloss blue of the insert. Now, there are two versions of this bezel. The black dial, black bezel watch, features ADLC, or amorphous diamond-like carbon. The blue one features Cartier's first ceramic bezel, so it's highly scratch resistant, and you can see how the bezel is actually dished so it acts as a guard for the sapphire, helping to keep this watch durable in the face of scratches and scuffs. You'll also note that there is a wonderfully refined, almost lugubrious quality to the detent of this click. It is incredibly precise, a 120 click bezel that you can place right over the broad sword style hand. And I'll mention that the index of this bezel is also loomed, not the case on the UN. So in terms of actual diving functionality, Advantage Cartier. We'll get closer and appreciate the dial now. And you can see that the dial features a combination of a concentric circular stamped pattern underneath the hour track and a blue sunburst at center. There's a small and exaggerated petite seconde sub dial at six o'clock and you can see those characteristic brand signature Cartier oversized and stylized Roman numerals, broadsword hands loomed at center, and then there is a frame for the triple date with a monotone navy blue date disc in it. It's a triple date because if the hand covers up the date, you can actually tell the current date by viewing the preceding and succeeding dates so you can read even if it's covered. Now, I'll also mention this watch will win the loom shot. I hope I'm not spoiling the ending, but you will see and you will agree. Underneath the case back, Cartier MC 1904 Petite Seconde, automatic winding twin mainspring barrel, 48 hour power reserve, 4 hertz beat rate, quick set date, stop seconds. It has the twin mainspring barrels for excellent torque release, even torque release that is, for isochronous operation for the full power reserve, and it features Etacron regulation mechanisms so you can very precisely regulate this 27 joule manufacture movement. 300 meter water resistance and a tough automatic tank like tractor caliber. Now the watch faces stiff competition 
from Ulysse Nordin. Ulysse Nordin has been doing marine divers since the early 2000s, but the model you see here was part of a mid-cycle refresh of the UN catalog launched in late 2018. This might be the best watch that Ulysse Nordin makes. So throwing it on the wrist, I'm going to go wide because I know you guys want broad shots that give you a better sense of scale. Would you guess that this is a 44? I wouldn't. It looks and feels the same size as the Cartier, so ergonomically it's superb. Feather light and grade 5 titanium. It's also a nice hypoallergenic option for those who might have a little bit of a nickel allergy with conventional steels. It's much thicker than the Cartier. 14.9 versus 11.3, so it's a bit of a chunk, but it should fit underneath jacket cuffs. Lug to lug, it measures 50 millimeters, and though it has a broad spacing of 21 millimeters between the lugs, you can see that there's a little bit of a overrider quality to the lug ends, so you can't place a conventional strap in here. You're going to want to go with the factory option, and the factory option is remarkably imaginative. First, it's a nice integrated piece that sinks into the lugs, not just between them, but actually underneath them, as you can see those overrider hoods. Underneath, it's evacuated to allow the wrist to breathe, but also make it more flexible and pliant. Now, it has a handsome and dramatically double-finished stepped pin buckle, and you can see it features that same elevated bridge profile to sit flat on the wrist. Things get interesting on the non-buckle side, where there's a double knuckle in titanium that turns this into a bit of a hybrid bracelet strap, so it can pull straight down despite the fact that, yes, the strap is pinned against the case flank. Again, take note, because you have that full degree of articulation in the pivot, you can actually wear this watch on the same small wrist as the Cartier. Now, underneath, you can see that the individual apertures for the pin buckle are angled for a more secure fit. I really like what they're doing here. The case band is stronger than the Cartier. The Cartier is a bit more elegant. This one is a bit more industrial. You can see the sharp character lines in the fluting. You can see the, well, it's not a nameplate or a number plate on the flank. It's actually the latitude of Ulysse Norden in Le Loque, but it's the style of UN's old marine chronometers from the 19th century. You'll note that the crown is larger, the knurling is sharper, and the shear guards are shallower. All of this makes it easier to grip the crown when your hands are wet, sweaty, and gloved. And you can see the chunkiness of the knurling on the outside face of the bezel. The bezel is incredibly chunky. Let me give you a sense of what this sounds like. You won't be able to feel it, but you'll be able to extrapolate from the sound. Robust, mechanical, precise, chunky. I like it. This is what a dive bezel should feel like. Line up that zero with the minute hand, and as with the Cartier, you have a zero to 60 minute count up timer. I find these to be more practical than chronographs. Now, it is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer in the traditional of UN marine chronometers. This one for your wrist, though. Dive into the dial, and you can see that it features more of a matte finish than the Cartier. Matte and glare resistant, there is a double counter with seconds and the date down at 6 o'clock. And take note, it is a bi-directional quick set. You can set it in either direction. A wonderful feature. There's also a power reserve at 12 o'clock. I like that because an ISO compliant diver needs to have constant operation like a seconds dial to let you know the watch is running, but I would rather know if my watch is in the danger domain where it might stop or keep time poorly. So I like to know how much margin for error I have. So I like to see a power reserve indicator on a diver. I should mention that there's also a dished profile to this bezel with a rubber vulcanized insert that I found in practice on UN divers is just as rugged and resistant to marring and disfigurement as a ceramic insert. Plus you can see all of the characters and the hashes are raised metal, so quite durable. Turn it all over, and you can see the indices here are applique rather than the printed style of the Cartier. Turn it all over, and UN lets you see that for which you've paid. UN caliber 118, announced in late 2011, launched formerly for the 2000. 12 model year. The formal launch coincided with the release of a treasure trove of tech specs. 50 joules, automatic winding, COSC chronometer, 60 hour power reserve, unlubricated silicon escapement, and anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, both made in-house by UN subsidiary Sigatech. Free sprung balance with a full bridge beaten away at 4 hertz. Hacking seconds, bi-directional quick set date, and you can see handsomely finished and visible. Still 300 meters water resistant. Take a look at that case back. What are you looking at? You're looking at the latitude and longitude down to fractions of a second, describing the geographic location of Ulysse Norden's Le Loque, Switzerland workshops. Now, let's talk about the advantages of these two watches and which one I would pick. The Cartier launched first of these two, so the Cartier will run the gauntlet first. Cartier, 
ceramic bezel insert and a loomed index on the bezel. It's just a more durable bezel and a more visible bezel. If you actually want to use this as a timer in the dark or heaven forbid during a dive where there might not be a lot of light, you really do need a loomed bezel. Cartier delivers on that front. Loom winner overall. The UN might be more uniformly loomed, but this is the easier of the two to distinguish at night. Moreover, the monotone date disc on this watch in dark navy blue works better in the context of the dial. The UN offers higher contrast, but frankly, I don't need this information while I'm diving, and when I'm on the surface, I can take an extra moment to read. I like the integration and the coherence of that blue disc on a blue dial. Furthermore, slimmer, far slimmer, I think this watch really shows its Cartier dress watch pedigree, and it's the more natural match for a tight cuff, especially a formal attire cuff, such as a dress shirt or exotics, such as French cuffs. I would say this is a better value overall, because though both watches cost $7,900 US, the Cartier does retain its value somewhat better, with the UN selling pre-owned at about five to five and a half thousand, the Cartier Blue right here selling for about five and a half to six thousand dollars pre-owned. I'll also mention that this is better for small wrists. Shorter lug to lug, more dramatically curved around that small wrist, and with the ability to pull the strap straight down, you can see that there is a distinction. Although the ergonomics of the UN will sneak up on you and surprise, you can still see that's a lot of flare and fight versus the easy ergonomics of the cambered and tight coupled Cartier strap and case combination. So what else does this one have? Well, if you're going to give a watch as a gift, a steel Cartier sports watch is a great choice. It has more general appeal and if you are in a culture or relationship where the giving of a watch might be expected or common, this is the safe choice. This is the one that won't disappoint anyone. So if you're given a gift, the Cartier is the one to opt for. Finally, it's easier to set. A small distinction, but when I set these two watches, I find there's more precision in the setting mechanism of the Cartier so I can really dial in the hand to the minute or even a fraction of a minute with the Cartier. The UN, eh, maybe a little bit more play in the mechanism. Let's talk about the advantages of the UN. First, technology. Bi-directional quick set, both directions. COSC certified Swiss chronometer. Cartier makes no promises about accuracy. A power reserve indicator on the dial. It makes sense on a, on a sports watch that might be used as a backup lifesaver, so I like that. A free sprung balance with a full bridge for toughness. The Cartier has neither feature. Moreover, with the silicon inside, you get the advantage of anti-magnetism with the silicon hairspring and an unlubricated silicon escapement, which is important because it helps this watch to achieve a five-year warranty, whereas Cartier is only willing to vouch for two. So tech advantages, UN. Also, warranty advantage, you lease Norden. Bezel action. Like a machine gun, belt fed, solid, impressive. A display case back, so you can see and enjoy the handsomely finished movement, and it is an entertaining movement to look at. So. Ulysse Norden showing a bit more respect, giving you that display case back with no compromise in water resistance. Moreover, I would also say that the watch is light and easy on the wrist, despite being a 44, and it has that cool articulated strap that makes this an easy watch to wear even on small wrists. Not quite as microscopically small as the Cartier, but the ergonomics of this watch do surprise and it will sneak up on you. I'll also mention that the timepiece has an easier grip of its bezel and an easier grip of the crown. So for setting the cardinal instruments of the watch, the grip is easier, especially when your hands might be wet, sweaty, or gloved. I'll also mention that the endless quirkiness of this watch endears it to me. You have that UN Marine chronometer style dial, just like their old deck clocks. You have the plate fixed by blued screws on the flanks. You have that chunky knurled bezel. You have the articulated strap bracelet hybrid. You have the Ulysse Norden latitude and longitude etched into the case back of the watch. So if you want brand character, both watches bring it, and they do feel like their respective brands. This one's just a bit weirder, and for a weird enthusiast preoccupation like watch collecting, you might find that your tastes tend toward the UN as well. Finally, I have to say that between the two of them, I just find the UN more interesting. There's something more character rich, charming, and colorful about it, despite the fact that both of them are equally blue. So you guys let me know in the comments below, which of these would you choose? Would you go with the Patrician Cartier or the disruptive newcomer from Ulysse Norden? Calibre de Cartier Diver, 
Ulysse Nardin diver chronometer. You can see there is a loomed dot, but barely in red luminova on the UN. The UN has more loom on its indices. The Cartier, however, has brighter loom overall. It's easier to read the critical hour and minute hand. Orient yourself with the Roman numeral 12, and then you can see just how much more visible the luminescent index is on the bezel of the Cartier. It's just a better tool for diving in that respect. Advantage, Cartier.